Facts of Love online every Saturday. We are talking about love, y'all. I don't know what God's going to say about love, but we're talking about love. That's my favorite subject. So let me silence everyone real quick. Attendees, lecture mode. There All participants are. are muted. All right. Now, back to the scripture. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. You know what? The sounding brass and the tinkling cymbal in our day, if you could imagine what it always looked like when a, a married couple went down the road in a pretty car and she's all in her bridal outfit and he's in his in his tuxedo and they're going off to start their new life together and some dingbat ties a bunch of cans to the back of their car. So when they're going down the street, the cans are empty. So they make a lot of noise. Same thing. When they talk about sounding brass or tinkling simple, what that exemplifies is emptiness. When you're empty and you're religious, you make a lot of noise. That is so bizarre, but you'll notice that about religious people who aren't living anything, who are all about religion and they got a whole lot to say, talking loud, saying nothing. Two, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So <clears throat> for people out there who have a lot of clout, who have a lot of influence, you can, you know, rub elbows with the uppity ups and you can, uh, you, you may be considered a world changer and an earth mover. You know, you might be one of those kind of people. And you're excited. You're, you're on a high. You love what you do. You're on a high, but you're doing it out of ego. You're doing it because it makes you feel great about you. You're not doing it out of love. You're doing it for recognition. So you want to make sure everybody knows that you're doing this and you're doing that and you're going here and you're going there. I, I, I know somebody that I've known all my life that's like that. And they love letting everybody know all the wonderful things they do for people. And I mean, and they're doing it for people who don't need it. That's the comical part. They don't do it for people who really need it. They do it for people who don't need it because they want the recognition of people they respect. And the people they respect make money. <laughs> it's really funny. But anyway, okay. So a lot of times you will find that you, you have to check your motives, you know, when you do things. You have to check your motives. Um I just wanted to stop and share that. I'm 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 getting a little a little moment of where am I? So let's see. Let me keep reading <laughs> verse three. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. For this is when it gets good, y'all. This is when you get a good picture of what love really is. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. So that means I'm not jealous of Lynn because her hair is six inches longer than mine. Well, not that jealous. Okay. Um, <laughs> Lynn is not jealous of me because I'm the most beautiful woman she ever met in her life and I look like I'm 16. <laughs> okay, so when you love somebody, you don't resent what they have, even if you don't have it. When you love somebody, you're not, uh, let me see what's the word I'm looking for. You're not pushy. It, it doesn't have to be your way, your way or the highway. Uh, I don't do it that way. I don't, I don't say it like that. I don't drive that route. I don't like that street. No, I'm not going if you're going to go down to that city. I don't like those people in that city. That's a weird neighborhood. I don't, I mean, it, 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 
it's kind of like my way or the highway and everything with some of you. If you're going to have dinner and they fix something and it's something you don't like on the plate, but everything else you eat, oh, that's okay. I'll, I'll go out and eat. I, I don't know why you guys always eat stuff I don't like. I mean, it, it gets obnoxious over a while. I mean, over some time. You don't realize it because you're thinking of me, myself, and I. And those are the kind of people that vaunt themselves. Those are the kind of people that are puffed up. They tend to be a bit arrogant. They tend to think more highly of themselves than they ought. So they walk around feeling like their taste is better. Their looks are better. Their brains are higher. Their personality is the most fantastic in the whole room. And everybody else is a bore. They're a bore because they don't want to talk about what you want to talk about. So if Anthony and I are talking about, if, if I'm talking about racquetball and Anthony wants to talk about automobile mechanics, if we are truly friends, we truly love each other, we're going to sit and we're going to, it's going to be give and take. I may not know all that about cars. He may not have ever picked up a racket. But because we love watching each other enjoy what we do, we want to hear about it. So we will sit and listen. And if you're not willing to listen to someone because they're not talking about your niche, then baby, you better take another look at the man in the mirror because you are so caught up in yourself, you don't have room for anybody else and their differences. So if we want to, if I want to play racquetball and I invite Anthony to come with me and play racquetball and Anthony says, I don't play racquetball. Okay. But what, you know, wouldn't you like to try it? No, I don't play racquetball. Okay. Have you ever played racquetball? No. Would you like to give it a shot? No. See, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm imitating people I know who talk like that. I'm serious. It is the most bizarre thing. They don't realize how narcissistic, how self-centered they are. They don't realize how selfish they are. It's, it's you, you know, you have a gathering of people and you're sitting around. I'm talking about stuff that happened years ago, y'all. I'm talking years ago. And, and you're sitting around people. And this person monopolizes the conversation and blah, 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 blah. And I did this and I do that and da, da, da. When I was 30 and when I was 20 and I, 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 I. Someone else starts talking. Oh, you know, that reminds me. I used to do so-and-so and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. And they'll get up and say, anybody want something to drink? Um, and they get up and get a drink. And they come back, and before the person is finished, they're back on what they're talking about. They didn't want to hear what anybody else had to say. See, this is, these are the kind of things we don't realize that show how much love we have in our hearts and how little we have. We may love ourselves, but you know how that goes. You know, we're not always all that. Oh, demonstrative when it comes to other people. That, that's why the Bible says, prefer others more than yourself. I remember when uh, Lynn took me out uh, for my birthday uh, a couple of years ago. I won't say what, but I'll just say that woman had about 10 or 15 boxes, gift boxes, all wrapped up. I'll never forget. She went, look, she went through time. She went through trouble. She was creative, trying to find ways to surprise me, to make it a, a treasure hunt. She, I mean, it was like one thing after the other, after the other, after the other. Some of the things she made herself, a labor of love. Y'all, listen, when people are, when people are, when people love someone, they're not loving that person for what they can do for them. They're loving that person in a way that they try to find ways 
to make them smile. They try to, it's like what I did with my father. He spent his life pouring into me, teaching me, talking to me, guiding me, counseling me, warning me. You hear me? When I, when he was on his last year, I begged God to let me take care of him. I said, Lord, I want him to have just an ounce of what he gave me. I want him to know somebody stuck with him through the end, like he stuck with me. And it would be even more of a blessing to him if the one he poured into like he did when he poured into me was the one that stuck with him to the end to say, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'll wipe your behind. Yes, I'll feed you. Yes, I'll bathe your body. It's nothing to me. Nothing compared to all that you've done for me. All the love all the time. See, that's reciprocal love. But when it's all about, what about me? What about me? What about me? That's when you, you're vaunting yourself. You're puffed up. You're caught up in me, myself, and I. It's my way or the highway. And, and, and you can't tolerate anybody who doesn't think like you do, who doesn't, who, who doesn't play racquetball like you do, who doesn't shoot pool, who doesn't like movies you do. That, that's no, I'm sorry. I don't care what it is. Like, I remember my ex-husband. He was excellent in tennis. I didn't like tennis, but I went and played tennis with him. He didn't like racquetball, but he came and played racquetball with me. My husband and I, Milton DeVore. Oh, my goodness. I remember, let me share this with you. I'm trying to share, trying to paint a picture of love. This man, my husband was 100% blind. Everything was black. Mm -hmm. This man told me he did not want me driving to LA by myself at night. I wanted to attend a class so that I could become a prison chaplain. That was required. Sure enough, he tells me he doesn't want me to drive by myself. He didn't go any further. He just said that. So I took it to prayer because I said, Lord, I want to take the class. Make a way. <laughs> so what happens? My husband took the initiative now. I mean, six o'clock to nine o'clock. He's got programs he watches every single night, y'all, without fail. But he called me over to the phone, handed it to me had me tell the access operator, the Metro access, where I wanted to go on such and such a night, what hours to go and what hours to come back. Why my husband, I'm, I'm, I'm painting a quick picture, so just bear with me on this. My husband had the uh, service because of his blindness. So they would take him wherever he wanted to go. But if he had someone with him, it could only be one person because a blind person could have one guide. Well, of course, I was his guide. I was his wife. So he would take me instead of me having to drive to L.A. or not going to class at all. He chose to call Metro Access, have me arrange with them to pick us up which means my husband had to come in order for me to get the Metro access ride. He thought to do that. So twice a week, three hours a night, he's sitting up there dozing off and waiting for us to finish the class. But he went so that I could go because he didn't want me going if I drove by myself. So rather than me driving, he had the Metro Access driver drive both of us because he had the right to get the ride, but he was really getting the ride for me to attend class. And of course, if he went down there with me, he had to sit through the class until it was time to come home or Metro wouldn't come and take me home. He had to be in the car. So that meant he had to sit through the, he thought that through, you know, we don't realize the things that people do that where they think through. Some of you are unappreciative. 
You're so demanding. You're so full of entitlement. You don't recognize love when it's, it's, it's bestowed upon you. You don't recognize it. You slap love in the face. You cuss love out. You kick love to the curb. Why? Because you don't appreciate it. You don't even know what you're doing. Well, let me continue. <laughs> Five. Doth it does not, love does not behave itself unseemly. It seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Let's go through that. We already dealt with seeking her own. We already, we didn't deal with easily provoked. If you find yourself getting angry at people real easy, something's wrong, baby. If I find my temper getting short like that, first thing I say is, Lord, my love tank is going low. Please fill me up. Because I know that's the only reason. That is the only reason I get annoyed. It's because my love tank is low. So what I want you to do is always ask God to keep you full of his love. His love, not yours. And your love ain't worth a hill of beans compared to his. Mine ain't either. All right. Charity vaunt. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me go back. It seeks not her own. So it doesn't have to have my way or the highway. Right. You're not easily provoked. You know, what did you say? Oh, I know. I know you're talking about me. I don't know who you think you are. You think you're better than me. And, blah, blah, blah. and here comes an argument out of nothing. Huh? Where'd that come from? You, not them. You. All right. So here we go. Thinketh no evil. What is thinketh no evil? You're not suspicious of everybody. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't hang out with uh, with with her. I, I don't hang out with him. He has a very sneaky look about him. Um. Uh, 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 okay, you know what I'm talking about. You know about Peter Mai. Peter Mai. Oh, he looks so sneaky. You notice his eyes? Doesn't he look sneaky? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't trust people like that. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. He can't hang with me. I'm sorry. You, what is that? What kind of nonsense is that? Think it's no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity. You knocked him on his behind. Oh, I bet they hurt him so bad. So what's so fun about hearing that? What's entertaining about hearing about somebody getting beat down? Huh? You really think that's fun to listen to? You would actually lend your ear to that nonsense. Ah, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Ah, I was watching a movie the other night about this family who had an abusive daughter. The daughter had never been spanked. Uh-oh, there's the problem right there. Sorry, y'all, but the Bible does encourage corporal punishment. And I'm telling you, I've had my booty whooped a few times, and it was the right thing to do, and I knew it even when it was happening. So don't talk about it's abusive. It's not. Not when it's done according to the Bible. Not when it's done that way. No. It stopped me from doing some stuff that would have gotten me in trouble down the road. Because Mama Sita was scared of getting her booty whooped. Not because Mama Sita was all that honest and all that full of integrity. I was a kid. I was I given to mischief. But they took that mischief and drove it right out. And it wasn't just a lecture, baby. It was a lecture, a whooping, and a lecture. <laughs> yes. And on top of that, being grounded. You hear me? And it wasn't an angry lecture. It was a lecture where you reason with somebody. Come on, girl, you got better sense than that. Now, listen, if you're going to do this, do you know down the road where that could lead you? Yeah, I mean, you. <laughs> Whew. anyway, okay, let me move on because I can get into parenting skills and I'm not a parent, but I had good parents when it came to discipline. I'm going to tell you right now, they did that right. That's one thing they did very well was discipline. All right. Now, <laughs> your booty whoopings hurt though. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, there's all things. Verse eight, charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fall. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. 
In other words, when you get to heaven, you ain't going to need no tongues. <laughs> Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But it's because, verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. Everything we do down here is in part. 10, but when that which is perfect is come, that's Jesus Christ, then that which is in part shall be done away. That's when we get into our new bodies. 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child. Now, this is the part. Some of us can't say this in the past tense like this does. That's the sad part. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish ways. I'm so sorry that many of you cannot testify to that. Because some of you are 75-year-old children. Some of you are 45-year-old children. Some of you are 85-year-old brats, spoiled brats. Sorry about that, but it's true. And when I find myself, I got my bratty ways. When I find myself acting like one right here in the house all by myself, I apologize to the Lord and ask him, take that silly spirit out of me. That's too childish. I'm sorry, Lord, to even still have that those ways. We all have little childish ways, but I'm telling you, some of you are total ch children. You just, you have a temper tantrum. Some of you men, you will have a temper tantrum if the food isn't just right. You have a temper tantrum if the wife doesn't look just right. Then you want to beat her down and beat her down and beat her down and think she wants you to make love to her after you, she, you got through treating her like that? You must be out your ever-loving mind. Something's wrong upstairs. And then you think your kids want to come give you a hug and play with you after you got through giving the boy and the girl a black eye because you have a temper tantrum because everything's not going your way. That's not love. <clears throat> Twelve. Mm -mm -mm. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then, face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. And for those of you who may not have a clue, charity is the Bible term for love in the King James. Agape love. There are three types of love in the human realm, in the earth realm. Phileo, friendship, brotherly love. Eros, me and my husband had that. And the brotherly love, but we were husband and wife. Know what I mean? All right. Number three is, let me see, there's Phileo, there is Eros. I think that's it. And the third one is agape. That's the godly love. The godly love is unconditional love. That means I love you no matter what. When I watched this, this movie where the, uh, the girl was abusive to the mother, the girl broke her father's fingers in the door. I mean, she was totally out of control. Now, she would have been peeling herself up off the floor if I had been the mother. But, you know, be that as it may, uh, this is a movie. <clears throat> well, they literally, <laughs> the boy, the brother got so tired of it, he called the cops. Now, when they went to arrest her, they tried to talk them out of it. And when and the cops said, well, how did you get your hand hurt? And he did the exact same thing that women do. I mean, when, when you're a victim of abuse, your love for someone can sometimes be misplaced because sometimes the best way to love them is tough love. They have to serve. They have to know that their actions have consequences. 
And when you don't teach people that, they go through life with that entitlement. Me, what about me? You handle me, you take care of me. Well, I want this, I want, I, 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 I. And you, and you actually in, inadvertently create a monster. So even the father told the lie, oh, I caught it in a so-and-so. No, baby, your daughter did that to you, broke your fingers. But you lied to the cop just like a lot of abused women do. Out of love, because love covers a multitude of sin. The boy just had enough. He couldn't take it anymore. He thought the girl was going to kill his parents. So yeah, he was protecting. He was doing it out of protection, not out of trying to get rid of her, just trying to protect his parents from being killed. She had a knife in her hand. So just to let you know, <clears throat> when you love someone, you can have a healthy love or an unhealthy love. So you've got phileo, you've got uh, eros, and then you've got agape, God's love, unconditional love, unmerited favor. When you are the love, some people love so much that it is actually counter productive. It is, uh, how can I say this? Love can be your greatest strength, but your greatest strength can also become your greatest weakness. You can love somebody so much that they, they dr drill you into the ground. They beat you down, beat you down, mistreat you, disrespect you, take your money, borrow money, never pay it back, use you, take advantage of you, take you for granted, tie up your time. They don't appreciate. They just take, 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 take. More, more, more. How do you like it? How do you like it? More, more, more. Oh, my goodness. And next thing you know, the person's just had their life sucked out of them. Now they're dead. You're mad at them for dying, but you're the one that drove them into the grave because they're so busy trying to love you, they neglected themselves. Mm. They neglected their own health. Oh, anyway, so that's why for those of you who love to a fault, you need to ask God when to pull back. There are times, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there is a time to embrace, but there's also a time to refrain from embracing. Now, one of the moments that I can use as an example, and I'm closing, trust me, I am closing. A movie I saw of the movie Ray, where Ray Charles had gone blind as a little boy. And it came a point where his mother, uh, 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 you know, they were both in the house. Ray fell and skinned his knee. And he, he, it shocked him, so he cried. You know, he was about seven, six or seven. He's on the ground crying. His mother's standing right there with tears running down her eyes. You could tell the acting was beautiful. You could tell that as a mother, she would want to grab her child and just, oh my God, you're blind. I don't want you falling and getting hurt too. But she refrained from embracing. Why? She was trying to teach him. It's not the end of the world. The falling, the breaking, the dropping things, tripping, all of that comes with your new world of blindness. I can't be there with you everywhere you go. Nobody will be there holding your hand. You've got to learn to deal with these things on your own without falling apart. But since you're a child, you're going to fall apart. But I have to let you go through that whole process. Or you will never grow to be a man an independent man. So she refrained from embracing with tears running down her eyes, silent as she could be. And next thing you know, in the silence, because he's calling mom on and he doesn't hear anything in the silence, he hears something creeping on the floor. That's a nasty sound. I've heard him. 
uh, crickets crawling on the floor. Oh, I hate that sound. But anyway, so he heard it and he, he, it caught his attention and all of a sudden he forgot he had fallen. Now he's fascinated by the sound. What is it? What is it? And he follows the sound and he, he's able to find it and he scoops it up in his hand and he hears the cricket, cricket doing this little thing. And he was just so caught up in this. And the mother was just so relieved that he was able to go through that process unscathed. <laughs> anyway, just want to share with you, love comes in different shades. Love comes in different flavors. There's a love that nurtures. Then there's a love that chastises. There's a love that warns. Then there's a love that steps back and lets you take your lick in for what you just got through doing. Love comes in different ways. And you have to understand if you have people in your life that are telling you we can't help you anymore. That might be the best thing that could happen to you. Like a young man I knew who thanks his mother to this day for putting him out in his early 20s. She put him out because he wouldn't get a job. He's laying around on her. And she said, no, you're not. She put his stuff out in the yard, y'all, and changed the locks. He had to bump and bump all around his friends and sleep in their, on their couches till he finally woke up and smelled the coffee and got himself a job. And from getting a job, he got a place to live. From getting a place to live, he found a beautiful woman, married her, raised, uh, took care of her and raised th their kids. And guess what? He thanks her because he said that was an act of love where you forced me to become a man, a real man. Anyway, God bless you. Just wanted to paint that picture of love. And I hope you got at least some of it. I hope you benefit from it. And I hope you can recognize when it's not love, when they're only hanging around you because you got the car. They're only hanging around you because they know you're going to pay for the meal. They only hanging around you because they know that you live in the mansion and they can party at your house. Party over here. Come on, party over there. No, you want people to love you for you, not for what you can do for them. All of a sudden you go broke and your friends are in the wind. That's not a friend. You can't do for them, so now they're not around. They don't call you anymore. That's not a friend. That's a user and a taker. Not someone who loves you. Not someone who has your best interest at heart. I'm done. God bless you. I knew I had to cut this one. I had to, I had to pull my reins in because I can go on and on and on when it comes to this love subject. Anyway, let's go on and let's close out in prayer. I'm going to shut off the mics. Hang on a minute. Give me a second. Mm -hmm.